What is good, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Ruffle Rowlett, and welcome to a brand new video, guys. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we've got ourselves a brand new rumor for 4chan, and I thought we'd take a look at it and break it down. In the first half here, we're going to go through everything that's in the rumor, and then after we've done that, we're going to break down each aspect of it one by one and discuss it further. So let's get started with the first thing. This was posted on 4chan to begin with. It had the same Ben Affleck image as the original Ben Affleck leak from last year, which actually revealed a lot of stuff and was a legitimate leak that revealed a lot of stuff. So here's what he says, though. I love armor from Anonymous. He says, Gigantic. Max for Raichu based on Gorochu, which uh, if you don't know, Gorochu is a scrapped version of like a evolution for Raichu, uh, which was supposed to be done back in Generation 2, I think, but they actually scrapped it. Then he says Tyranitar is going to get one based on Godzilla, which makes a lot of sense. The whole basis of Tyranitar is, uh, or the whole origin of Tyranitar and mythology is, you know, Godzilla. Then he says Hydreigon uh, based on King Ghidorah, which also makes sense. I mean, we know there's this whole kind of, uh, I don't know, like Tyranitar and Hydreigon kind of basis in um, kind of kaijus, so it makes sense. Uh, Drapion, and then also Alakazam. I do wonder how those two would look like, but we'll get further into that later and talk about it individually. Then he says, there's no Galarian form for Beautifly or Dustox, which, okay, that's fair enough. I mean, I can see what he means by that. I mean, that, that's fair enough, but okay. So no Galarian forms for Beautifly or Dustox. I'm not sure what that's meant to mean. Maybe he's trying to like disperse the ID that we're going to get a Dustox uh, Galarian form because the uh, kind of like... Um, Rose on the top of one of the characters, the new rivals, actually looks like a Dustox. Either way, Dustox is one of Clara's Pokemon, but not the main Loki Toxicity. Um, not sure what that's meant to mean. I guess he's trying to say that her main Pokemon is Toxicity. Galarian Slowbro is a pure psychic type. Fair enough. Avery's main Pokemon is an Alakazam which sounds pretty cool. Avery appears in Sword, but you don't have battles with him. The same with Clara in Shield, so they can be vice versa. The main villain is an ex-disciple of Mustard and has a Hydreigon as a, po a main Pokemon. So that to me sounds pretty cool. Um, Hydreigon as a main Pokemon, sounds interesting, to say the least. Uh, then he continues by saying here that Gigantamax training is, able f uh, is available, I guess, for all Pokemon if their species have access. So I'm really wondering what that's gonna look like. Then he says that the post game of of, um, Isle of Armor is about the legendary birds and there's a reference about Shadow Lugia. Two trailers programmed for April. So basically that is the rumor guys, that's all that it had to offer. I think there is maybe some other stuff that might have been posted later on but it's not really here at the moment that I can go through but that's basically the general gist of what the rumor has to offer. So let's break down each aspect of this rumor one by one. So first things first, Gigantamax for Raichu based on Gorochu. Now Gorochu, uh, Game Freak have said in the past that it's not going to happen, they're going to do Gorochu or anything like that, it's just a scrapped idea, it's never going to happen. But here's the thing you got to remember though, they say stuff but they always contradict themselves. They say they never do DLC, they did DLC. They said they would never remove Pokemon, they remove Pokemon. It's a lot of things that you can't really trust them when they say. So, them saying they wouldn't do Gorochu or Gorochu was scrapped or whatever is never really something you can take, you know, as the truth. You gotta, like, always assume that it could change at any given point with them because they constantly change their mind about things. So, keep that in mind. Next up, Tyranitar Godzilla. It makes sense. He's based on Godzilla to begin with. Like, Godzilla, like, literally Tyranitar's based on Godzilla. And then Hydreigon, King Ghidorah. That makes sense as well. Um, like, Hydreigon's based on, like, a Hydra, you know, like a Hydreigon Hydra, as well as also uh, King Ghidorah from, I guess, you know, uh, the Kaiju kind of like, you know, um, franchise, so to say. But then we also have Drapion and Alakazam. Now, I wonder how Drapion and Alakazam would look like. That's really strange that he doesn't include any information about them, but who cares? Uh, so next up here is the fact that he points out specifically that there is no Galarian form for Beautifly or Dustox. I guess that's trying to kind of disperse the idea that it's going to be one, based on like what people have been thinking, just because of Clara's like little rose rosette on the top of her head. Um, you know, of the Dustox like rosette she has on the top of her head, people are thinking that's going to be the case, but maybe it's not, and he's trying to say here that her main Pokemon is going to be a low Loki Toxtricity, which that seems fair enough to me. Then he points out the Galarian Slowbro is pure psychic, but he doesn't mention Slowking at all here. Um, he doesn't go anything into, you know, what that's going to be like, which is kind of like weird to me, honestly. Like, we know Slowpoke already. We've got the Galarian Slowpoke, what that looks like. Um, but we do not know anything about the other ones just yet. Of course, that's what we're waiting for, right? We're waiting to see what gonna, they're going to be about. What's the deal with them? But he's really not giving us any information here, just based on that. Next up, he says here that Avery's main Pokemon is an Alakazam. And that makes sense, right? Um, with Alakazam, of course, also having a new Gigantamax form, it will be a cool way to introduce it if they introduce it through Avery as his kind of, like, you know, main Pokemon. It'd be cool as a way to introduce the Gigantamax through that. So, 
I'm honestly on board for it. I wouldn't see an issue with it. I think it would be pretty cool. Next up, Avery appears in Sword, but you don't have battles with him. The same uh, for Clara and Shield. So, doesn't seem too odd, honestly, uh, that they would still appear in the story somehow and have some sort of impact. I mean, they're just going to be like the extra rival that's not really your rival, but as the character's kind of around, um, which we've pretty much gotten used to at this point. It's pretty common in most Pokemon stuff, uh, most Pokemon game, so to say. So it's not really anything odd, strange, or off about that. So, I mean, nothing weird, nothing odd, nothing strange. Let's continue. So, the main villain is an ex-disciple of Mustard. Now, if you don't know who Mustard is, is the kind of like old master, kind of like uh, Kung Fu master type guy that you're going to meet in the dojo uh, on the Isle of Armor. So he's going to essentially be our new kind of like, uh, I don't know, professor, almost like the equivalent to what our professor used usually is, right, the kind of person that always, like, gives us a little bit of tips and stuff along the way, uh, that's what he's gonna be here, he's gonna be kind of like our master, he's gonna show us the way, um, and apparently his old disciple, he, according to this guy, is going to be the villain, now, what does that mean, like, does that mean, you know, I mean, how is he gonna operate, right, because let's be honest, there really wasn't any evil team in Sword and Shield, I mean, you can call, if you want to, Team Yell, you can call them the evil team, but they were a joke, they were a literal joke, like, they were more of a joke than Jesse and James from Team Rocket. Like, they, they were somehow more worthless than those guys. And, and that's honestly something hard to beat. But they were genuinely one of the worst teams. Actually, the worst team. Uh, I think that Game Freak has ever made. I, I get the whole point behind them, but they were so underutilized and so boring. They were just fans of Marnie, and that that just isn't fun, in my opinion. That just like who cares about that? Like that just isn't fun. I mean, sure, it doesn't always need to be a team that's gonna go for world domination and stuff. But they didn't even do general stuff. They were just like a boring non-nuisance like they were not even that annoying they were just kind of around doing f all you know what i mean they just weren't that fun to deal with in general right um so just to me in general i think that they just weren't worthy of being a good villain so i'm hoping i'm really hoping that this ex-disciple has kind of created his own little team because i think that would be really cool if he has got this like own little team of his and he's gonna do a bunch of crazy stuff with that but most likely what's gonna happen is he's gonna be an evil little guy doing his own little thing on his own and you're just gonna have to like run into him here and there once and you know a few times maybe like you know throughout the whole dlc maybe like five six times you'll run into him actually probably more than that um but you'll run into him he's just gonna be annoying he's gonna you're just gonna battle him and that's about it right i don't think it's gonna go beyond that i'm not sure they're gonna do anything bigger than that i think it's just gonna be that range and that's all they're gonna do with it so that's really all i can say about that <clears throat> next well he says here gigantamax training is available or able for all pokemon if their species have access so i'm assuming here he's trying to say that you're gonna be able to do like gigantamax training which i guess will allow your pokemon to become a gigantamax pokemon rather than like you having to catch it as a gigantamax pokemon you know what i mean so like this would kind of make the point of going to those like Gigantamax raids or whatever, trying to find those less necessary. It would be kind of obsolete for, you know, just make them kind of obsolete, you know, um, I would assume, right? Maybe, maybe it wouldn't, maybe it would, I don't really know, but I mean, it just seems like this could be some way to train them or actually like, you know, give them the ability to, you know, actually get Gigantamax forms or maybe this is something different where you actually train your Gigantamax Pokemon to become even stronger, which I don't know how you would do that or why you would want to do that. I mean, I mean, don't know why you would want to do that, but why they would allow for that to be a thing because Gigantamax Pokemon are already strong as is, like really strong. Like when you Dynamax, Gigantamax, it is really strong. So I'm really wondering how would they balance that? I really don't know. I'm really curious to see how that would work out, but we're just gonna have to wait and see what they do with it. Then he says here that the post game of the Isle of Armor is about the legendary birds, and there's a reference about Shadow Lugia. So first things first, I'm really confused about what he means by the legendary birds being the, the post game here. So this makes no sense because I think we've seen already that the Isle of Armor, as far as I can tell, is not where the legendary birds show up. Because I think the legendary birds only show up in the Crown Tundra. I, did, I think that's where the legendary birds actually show up. At least in the trailer, that's like what you know what it looks like it's going to be a part of, rather than you know what this guy's saying. Because I think what this guy's saying is kind of false. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. I don't really know. Like, I don't really know. I'm really trying to figure out if that makes any sense whatsoever. But hey, it is what it is. Then he says here that there's also two trailers programmed for April. So if there are trailers dropping in April, that would be fantastic. I mean, the game is going to be, you know, getting these DLCs very soon. I mean, at least the first DLC, which is this one, uh, that's dropping very soon. I mean, we're at the end of March already. You know, I mean, it's the 23rd of March when I'm recording this. And, you know, we're almost about to go into April. Then there's just May. And then, hey, June's already here. You know what I mean? So what is it? Like two, maybe two and a half, maybe less. Yeah, less than two and a half months, I would say. Uh, at most, three 
three months to go until we actually get this DLC and we can play it. So, you know, it just doesn't feel like too far-fetched that they would give us new trailers in April. Like, it just makes a lot of sense to me. But that's basically the general gist of the rumor, guys. There's really not much else to mention about it. We've gone through everything it had in there. So, hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, drop a like down below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and bye-bye, ladies and gentlemen.